Hey everybody, this is Abby from Abigail Lewis Photography. And today we're gonna talk about how I use Click One profiles to make all of my digital images look really similar to my film images. All right, so let's quickly go over how I would edit this image using uh, Click One profile colors. Let's see. So you'll find um, this is a little different if you're using one click profile. Um, usually, any presets that you would use would be over here in the left hand column. Um, I have way too many over here. <laughs> um, but I don't usually use these anymore. I come over here, and if you are updated in Lightroom, it should be right in this area. And you would click, you could either click um, your most used ones, which I have those saved, but you can also look through here and come down to all of the different, literally 157. And the only reason it's that many is because I um, bought them when they first came out and uh, they have updated them, I believe, two times since then. So each time they come with uh, a lot of different um, updates. Let's see why this is not loading. All right, um, so they're supposed to help you emulate film really, really well. I think they do the best job of any um, profile that I've ever seen, but I almost use the exact same one every single time. So when I'm using film, like real film, I shoot on Portra 400 about 90% of the time, um, and I scan it on a Frontier scanner. So. Um, it's, this is Kodak Portra 400, which is the film that I use, and then it's Frontier. And so I would click on this and then close out that panel. And then you'll still find this little profile, but now it has a new name right here. Um, so this is basically 100% is what um, film supposedly should look exactly like. Um, I, a lot of times people will, sometimes you'll make it a lot harsher kind of cool looking but not really my style um, but I usually actually bring this down to about 50 um, about half of what um, you know should you know technically should be on there so sometimes I'll bring it up to like 75 um, let's just do like 65 for now um, so I've got that applied this is uh, really close to the colors that the film would have um, and then I usually look at uh, the temperature next. Um, so this is uh, pretty close to what I would like. Um, sometimes I bring it down just a little bit, not be too, too, too um, warm. And then usually I look at the tint um, as well. And this is very, very green, um, partially because of um, the white balance I shot it at, but also um, because there was obviously so much greenery. Um, this is in Cheekwood in Nashville, and it's a beautiful spot, but um, you get a lot of green reflective light because of all the top of this. So um, it's already at 20. Sometimes I jump ahead a lot, so like 40, and I feel like that's too much. So maybe come down to 35, and I actually really like that. I might bring it down a little bit because some of here, like in this area, you get a little bit too much pink. Um, although I feel like her skin tone looks pretty good. So I would stick with what makes her look really, really great um, and doesn't kind of blow the image out, anything crazy. Um, the next thing I do is I come down here and um, look at the sharpening. So uh, I try not to bring this too far down, but I do like to have this um, closer to like 20 or 30. Um, film images are very rarely like super sharp so I, I like this to come down just a little bit and then I actually usually bring the noise reduction up just a tiny bit um, to make it just a little bit smoother more like film. Um, the next thing I do is I adjust uh, my cropping to something a lot more similar to what film would look like um, and I am super OCD I like the person to be really close to the middle so I would um, bring this in just a little bit more adjust this slightly um, it's so important to pay attention to the tiny details. Um, and so far this is the difference. That was the unedited and this is the edited. Um, so I might bring the warmth back up just a little bit and maybe even bring this down just a tiny bit. Um, I love to, when I'm editing, go to reset and just see the edits that I've made um, as I move through the image. Um, just to kind of give me a reference to where I started. 
Um, and uh, I might even come down to, sometimes I have to do this with images. Um, where are you? So the transform panel. So uh, I might change. So this is what this does. If you, you know, do something crazy, you would move images like that. Don't want anything that crazy. But um, I might move this over just a little bit because it wasn't quite centered. Um, and then bring that back. And yeah, that's pretty much what I do. This would be uh, really close to the image I would deliver um, and would look really similar to the film scan that I would get. Um, I think it's so important to um, then come in and, and edit out small uh, little details like this um, just to make the image look even better. Um, occasionally what I will do is um, adjust the exposure. This was... Uh, actually shot pretty close to what I wanted um, but you know I might bring this up just a tiny tiny bit or if I wanted her to be more in shadow I'd bring this down a little bit um, I think both are beautiful it's just kind of you know an opinion of what you think looks better um, and then occasionally I bring my contrast up to like 5 to 15 somewhere in there um, nothing too too crazy um, and if I were to edit this in black and white I can create another copy of this picture um, I usually put it by black and white up here and then just adjust the contrast. Usually not anything too much more. Sometimes I'll bring the exposure down when I do black and white and then I'll come over to shadows and bring those down just a little bit more. I like my black and whites to be pretty contrasted. Um, this might be a little bit too much, but that's pretty much it. That's what I pay attention to. So this is the before and this is the after with the click one profiles. If you found this video helpful, please tell me in the comments below and please subscribe to the channel right down here. Thanks guys.